Hi, welcome to Talking Books and Stuff, the program that talks all about books and writing and stuff. Here's your host, Dennis Rimmer. Hello and welcome back to Talking Books and Writing and Stuff Like That. Today we're talking with James Donaldson, author, a number of books to his credit. Uh, James Donaldson, I understand you live in Idaho or Utah. Which one? I can't remember. (laughs) Yeah, I live in the uh, Salt Lake Valley here, Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay, so what did you do before you became a full-time writer? Well, I hate to... To uh, categorize myself as a full-time writer, I kind of do it as a hobby. So I still have a you know a day job that I have to go to. Oh no! But I'm a reti- yeah, I'm retired military. So I was in the army for 20 plus years. Left that, uh, worked some other jobs, and of course I still work now for uh, the Department of Defense as a civilian. And I write as a uh, well, I like to write full-time as a as a job, but as it stands now, as a hobby. Okay, well, it's a pretty good hobby, and it's a good hobby to have. So, uh, where did you grow up? Tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. So, I grew up in the uh, Chicago suburbs uh, in Illinois. I joined the Army when I was 18. Of course, I moved once I was in the service, I moved around a lot. I retired. I was actually in uh, El Paso, Texas. I worked there as a, a police officer for three years until uh, taking a job with the Department of Defense and moving up here to... Uh, the beautiful uh, Salt Lake Valley. So when you were a kid, did you read and write much, or did this come later to you? So I've always loved books. Uh, I wasn't much of a writer. Uh, You know, I always wanted to be. Even when I was a young kid, I I admired uh, writers and just to come up with your own stories, I thought was just uh, a great pursuit. But I've always read. I love reading. I still love reading. I think it's just a far superior medium of entertainment compared to movies or television and so forth. It's just much more uh, intimate. And you can make your own stories up, like James Bond can be who you want James Bond to be, and you know Sherlock Holmes can be whoever you want Sherlock Holmes to be, not necessarily what the TV or movie people have you believe. So that's always the fun part of reading a book, right? Yes, not, there's a quote from a famous person, of course I'm not, uh, I can't remember the name, or, or uh, but the quote was something like, uh, uh, if, "If you want to uh, to read the book that you want to read, you must write it." Essentially, so so that's what I do. I, I write books that I would want to read, and hopefully my uh, readers uh, feel the same way. Uh, thinking back a bit to when you were a youngster, do you have any uh, favorite books uh, that you can recall from when you were a kid? Well, uh, of course, you know, kid books. I, uh, as most kids, I fell in love with the. Uh, uh, Tolkien and the uh, the Lord of the Rings, just just great, just writing. I mean, just the, the the writing is incredible there. I like C.S. Lewis. I'm also a fan of the. Uh, uh, you talk about James Bond, the Ian Fleming. I have all his books, and I uh, really enjoy his writing style as well. So uh, up to your own writing work now. What was the uh, first uh, book that you came up with? So the first thing I wrote was a uh, a novelette. It's called Night of the Shade. And I wrote that. Well, one, I had the story idea. But I really wanted to be a writer. So I was, I was thinking, you know, just because you want to do something doesn't mean you can do it. So I wrote this, and I uh, gave it to a professor friend of mine. She's a professor in the English department at the local college here. Uh, she proofread it and edited it for me. And then I gave it to my friend. And then I gave it to some people. Just, you know, I want some honest feedback. Uh, they all liked it. And so because of that, I wrote my first novel, which was uh, Blood Quest, uh, and uh, it took off from there, I guess. Now, the book I have in front of me is Vampyrus, and it's uh, the protagonist is Nash, and uh, this is from the Corsair Adventures. But uh, back to Vampyrus, I'm reading it. It uh, opens up, uh, to my mind, just like an episode of supernatural so is that uh, kind of the thing you had in mind when you sort of sat down to write this kind of stuff right so uh you know i think that the real world can be uh somewhat boring at times so i write the my books are all in a series called the corsair adventures the corsair 
Maybe that's like the, the call sign or the code name of my protagonist, Nash, like you said. So, uh, yeah, he's just kind of a, uh, as you know, has adventures or investigations or whatnot. Uh, it's called speculative fiction in that, you know, it's the supernatural elements in the real world. So kind of like the supernatural uh, TV show, if that's what you're trying to. Yeah, and uh, Nash, he just has one name, is that right? Right, so you know, I try to make uh, the character kind of mysterious. Uh, you know, he's like, uh, I don't want to say he's undercover, but he conceals his identity and goes by his call sign most of the time. And, uh, yeah, nobody knows his, his real name or, or his background, as a matter of fact. I keep that mysterious all the books also. Well, that's right, because then we can sort of fill in our own backstory for him. So um, Right, yeah, nobody knows. Is, is he a, he's an ex-cop, he's an ex-soldier, he's a spy. Yeah, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to hold that secret to myself, that's okay, then. Okay, so uh, talking with James Donaldson here, he's uh, based in Utah now, uh, retired military, um, works still full-time and writes uh, on the side. Uh, you use Smashwords, is that right, to publish your works? So, yes, I I, uh, I have my uh, novel size books on Smashwords, and then my I have several uh, novelettes and novellas, uh, actually, I use those. Uh, I use Amazon uh, for those, so they're only available on Amazon. But yeah, Smashwords for my novels, and of course, my novels are also on Amazon. And it seems to be a, a easier way for me to publish. So, uh, comparing the two for for uh, people starting out, uh, Smashwords or Amazon's pro publishing process, do you recommend one over the other, or they both have their good and bad points? Uh, yeah, I'd have to say they're both. Uh, Good and bad. I, I started with Amazon only because I was familiar with the, uh, you know, when my wife buys Amazon stuff, and yeah, you know, and so I'm familiar with the website, and the process was, was uh, easy. I switched over to Smashwords for my uh, bigger stories because you know they uh, market to different places, not just Amazon, uh, Barnes and Nobles and such. And the process was easy too. I tried to reformat the books, but there was no, uh, no giant learning curve. I can't, I can't disparage either one. They both were pretty easy. So Smashwords, it's a self-publishing process, but they do a, a, a lot of the background, the technical stuff for you. Is that how it works? Yes, uh, you know, of course, that's all technical stuff. I'm not familiar with what they do, but they, they review it. Uh, I don't know if they use algorithms or an actual person. I'm not sure. What, they check it for plagiarism and, and grammar and spelling and, uh, you know, maybe uh, pornography or something. They, they, they scan it all and they, they make sure it meets their standards before they publish it. And but it is self-published. Right, and that seems to be the way to go these days. Um, talking with James Donaldson here, a number of books that he has out there. You started out with the uh, Shadow Man trilogy. Is, is that what happened? So, yeah, my first, uh, like I said, my first uh, forte into writing it was a story called Night of the Shade. Uh, but then from there, I actually liked the antagonist, the, the 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 monster per se in the Night of Shade so much that I actually wrote two other uh, novellas after that, using like kind of a, a series, even though one, each one is standalone. And then I combined those, and so I'm, I'm calling that the Shadow Man trilogy. These three standalone novellas, and that's also I have actually by popular demand I combined those into a print book also because some people just like to have a, a, a printed book in front of them instead of a, a Kindle or whatnot. Exactly, and um, Vampirus is the one we have. Now, where did you get that title? Because it's, uh, is it a combination or a plural of vampires, or is it something different? Yeah, so I'm actually kind of pleased myself with that title, because uh, you know, I wanted to portray the vampire, obviously. You can see that vampires, it's pretty hard to, to miss the, uh, the uh, antagonist being vampires. But then in, in, in my story, I have uh, part, part of the vampire... It's a virus. I spelled it obviously. The iris is, is spelled differently than virus, but it's, it's a vampiric virus. Huh? But it affects the, but it affects the eyes a little bit. So in the iris, it's kind of like you can see if somebody has the virus. So I combined the iris, virus, and vampire, and I came up with vampires. It's great, and I really love the opening. I got into it real quickly, and I'm zooming right along here. I haven't finished it yet, but we're zooming right along. Uh, James Don <laughs> James Donaldson's with us, uh, the Corsair Adventures. Nash is the protagonist. We'll call him the hero because that's what we like to do. So tell us about your, your writing process. Do you write uh, a certain amount of time every day, or how does that work for you? 
So I, I wish I had that much time on my hands. I probably go by the month. So I set goals for myself for the month, and uh, and if I don't do that, I found that I, I actually don't keep up with my writing. So I set goals for myself uh, on a monthly basis, and then I write when I can. And it's usually at the end of the month because, oh, I haven't met my goal, so I need to, to crack down. Actually, that's a pretty good idea. Instead of thinking that you have to write something every day, you can just say, okay, I've got this amount to do for in this period of time. And uh, if something comes up one day and you're, you're kind of busy and have swamped and have to do other stuff, you don't really feel guilty or that you let yourself down so that seems like a good system yeah so uh i actually like to think that i write every day in that i'm constantly thinking about my current story or a future story so i'm constantly thinking about that so i kind of uh devote my time to writing even though the physical act of writing i set the goal about once a month but uh to, to my wife's chagrin i'm constantly thinking about uh writing and stories all the time well that's the thing is that it's always in your back of your mind right you're having dinner or whatever and all of a sudden something pops into your mind and you forget what the table conversation is all about and you're off with the world of nash and the corsair adventures and you forget to say oh yes that's right dear so is that kind of what right happened? so <laughs> my wife would be like uh, what, are you, what are you thinking about i'm like i'm thinking that should a, a ghoul live under a bridge or in a cemetery, that's how I asked. <laughs> and should we go, oh yeah, James is at it again, so here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Do you write, uh, you, you must write on a computer, I suppose, as opposed to a typewriter or... Yeah, yeah, I use a computer. I'm, I'm, I'm also in, uh, you know, because the computer, you got the spell check and so forth, and, uh, you know, you go back and edit, and it amazes me that these, these I, like I talked about C.S. Lewis, or a token that they, these people were able to write the great stories they wrote using a typewriter, not having the editing software that we have today. It's just, uh, there's no way I could do that. And, and then just, uh, I'm in awe of their writing ability. Well, yeah, because I actually use a typewriter for a lot of my stuff. I write book reviews, of course, and, and, uh, a history thing for a radio station up here. I use my typewriter, but you're right. If I want copies, I have to retype it. <laughs> or when you edit, then you have to retype it. Whereas on the screen, all of that stuff is is right in front of you. Although I still kind of like banging away on the typewriter. I kind of grew up with it, so I'm used to it. But oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> all those guys in the old days, quote unquote, even Hemingway up until the last 20 years, I suppose, it was strictly a uh, a hand, hands-on craft, I suppose you would say. Um, uh, yeah. James Donaldson is with us. A number of books are out there. Uh, I've got a page up here. You've got the Shadow Man trilogy. You've got uh, Dead Again, Vampiris, Escape, Night of the Shade, uh, Return of the Shade. Um, what's that one? Cryptic, I think it is. A page. Oh, Cryptic. Yeah. yeah. A cryptic. Uh, is hired nash is hired to help explore a labyrinth of ancient traps and treasures so did that idea just pop into mind one day yeah so i kind of uh stole uh that idea from like the old uh indiana jones or the uh kind of like the dungeons and dragons i was i always thought that was kind of a neat genre so in that one for half the book nash is underground kind of defeating these uh these uh, ancient traps and so forth and uh I've always enjoyed that type of story, and like I say, I want to write a book that I want to read. So that's a, that's a novella, and uh, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, he's, he's on the ground, like it's kind of a the Dungeons and Dragons, Indiana Jones type thing, or the Tomb Raider. All right. So James Donaldson's with us. Uh, what is the difference between a novella and a novel in the way you present them? Uh, I present them by the uh, the word count. So, uh, and I can't remember the word count off the top of my head. But uh, then the you know a novella they have a short story then a novelette then a novella then a novel and I think a novel is supposed to be like fifty two thousand words or something I can't remember the exact word count but that's how I uh, categorize my books right so yeah novellas are shorter of course but they can be um, more you know a hundred pages whatever so how many books do you yeah. have out there then that we can find well I want to say I have. Uh, a lot. So I want to say I have 10 <laughs> novellas and uh, two uh, two novels. And uh, I actually I actually like writing the the, no the novellas more because they're shorter stories. So 
so there's not a lot of uh, character development and all these uh, this other work that has to go into a into a novel. A lot of people don't realize how much work a novel takes, and the, the novella is just kind of the, the story. And uh, I really enjoy writing writing uh, those type of stories. Yeah, that probably makes it easier a little bit, like you said, on the brain. You don't have to uh, tie yourself down to a X amount of length to get to this barrier, whereas you can wrap the story up. If it wraps up in 35,000 words, then there you go. Why try to stretch it, right? Right. I, st I still stick to the uh, three-act structure, but, uh, yeah, there's so, so many other plot devices that, and uh, techniques that it's just easier. Oh, so tell me about the three-act structure. I don't think I know that. Oh, so uh, I'll tell you, Dennis, let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, when I first started wonder, when I wanted to write, you know, I thought oh, I'd just sit down and uh, start typing away, but apparently it's a lot harder than that. <laughs> I, bought a, a, I bought a book. You've probably seen these books in the, in the store called uh, Writing for Dummies. Yeah. They have a whole, you know, whole book, a whole series for dummies. Yep. Anyways, uh, this book held me out and it showed me how to write. It taught me the three act structure and so forth. So essentially, and this way, and this way movies are too. And I didn't realize it until I, I read this dummies book. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have the the first act, which is setting the scene, and the first act ends with the story question. So the story question would be like, uh, will the hero save the damsel in distress? That's the story question. Then you have the uh, second act, which is essentially the meat of the book. And then uh, the third act, which answers the story question. Yes, he does save the damsel from the evil witch or whatever it might be. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's the, essentially it. So there's the problem, um, the uh, the situation, the problem, the problem being solved, and then the, the wrap-up, a sort of in, kind of like that. Right. So, yeah. And then, yeah, right. And then there's a little bit more to it. They have some oh, disasters. Yeah. So midpoint of Act 2, you have what's called the midpoint disaster. Then Act Two uh, ends with what's called the major disaster, oh. and the major disaster happens, and then Act Three begins. And uh, it's funny. So once I start writing like that, now I watch TV shows or movies, and I can identify the story question, the midpoint disaster, the the end of Act Two to the major disaster, and so forth. <laughs> well, that's a good tip. Thank you very much for that. We'll pass that on to everybody. James Donaldson is with us. Uh, Vampirus is the book we have in front of us. It's part of the Corsair Adventures, featuring Nash, our mysterious yet effective protagonist. Um, where can we find your books? I'm sure that you have a website and stuff like that. Yeah, so I have a website. And the the URL is so long, I really hate to say it over the air. But I tell you what, I'm on I'm on Facebook and I'm on Twitter, and both of those have a link to my website. So my Twitter and Facebook handle are easy. It's at Corsair Author. So Corsair is C O R S A I R Author at Corsair Author. At follow me Twitter, follow me Facebook, and then I have links to everything there. That's perfect at Corsair Author. Now Corsair is kind of like a pirate, right? Right, so um, I really, uh, so I'm a big fan of the pirates, also. But uh, my uh, my protagonist, or my hero, like you, like you said, Nash, he's like call sign because you know it's kind of, he's kind of a, a swashbuckling type of, of a person, even though it's a modern day story. And um, and I kind of like to use the old uh, uh, pirate, the privateer. So back in the day, in the golden age of piracy, mm -hmm. you had pirates and you had privateers. Which did the same thing, but they're legally authorized to do what they were do to do by the government or whatnot. Yeah, right. So, and so, uh, <laughs> so I, I consider Nash kind of like a privateer uh, in that he's usually authorized to do what he's doing, uh, not all the time. And uh, <laughs> so I call him the Corsair. Well, you might as well because he's he's authorized, and yet he can do kind of like whatever he wants. So uh, to right. to get to the end, James Donaldson. You can find him at Corsair Author. That's all one word at Corsair Cors <laughs> at Corsair Author at of course the universal sign that we use and uh, look for his books. Uh, go to those sites and. Uh, it's been a treat. Well, thanks very much for, for talking with us, James, and I hope you have a good weekend and a good summer. Oh, you too, Dan. Uh, thank you. It was uh, quite a treat for me. Thank you for visiting with us today. This is Talking Books and Stuff with Dennis Rimmer. 
contact him at dennis at talkingbooks.tk. Thank you, and may all the good news be yours. Oh, and don't forget to check out his book, The Great Canadian Notebook, available across Canada and at amazon.ca. Oh, oh.